Hey nesters, welcome back to Nesting Haven. Today on my channel, I am participating in a collaboration with some of my YouTube friends here. We are going to be sharing some vintage recipes with you that is a summer theme. I will link the playlist down below of all of the participants. I look forward to checking out all the other recipes that everyone else has discovered. I'm going to be sharing two different recipes today. They are from a couple of different Betty Crocker cookbooks that I have gone ahead and thrifted. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the ones I am sharing with you today. So the first recipe book we're going to look at today is Betty Crocker's Party Book. This has over 500 recipes that goes throughout the year of all the different holidays that you can celebrate. This was put out in 1960. So the recipe I was looking for here, I looked to the contents to see something that was kind of summery. I found 4th of July, so I went to that section to check out what I could make. And then I found this Independence Day salad. It looked kind of interesting. It's kind of a twist on a potato salad. So I thought I would try that one. And the other recipe book we're going to work in today is Betty Crocker's Good and Easy Cookbook. 1,000 time-saving, taste-tempting recipes and hints for busy modern homemakers. This one was put out in 1954. We're gonna go to the dessert section and I was in the mood for some strawberry shortcake, and so I found this recipe here for double berry shortcake. This recipe book's a little interesting because it doesn't have the full recipe on one page. It tells you to go to page 28 to learn to make the drop biscuit dough. So that is what I am doing. I'm going to go ahead and make the drop biscuits to use for my strawberry shortcake. I, they did suggest that you could use the pre-made stuff as well, but I mean, this is a recipe video and I prefer the homemade stuff myself anyway, so let's go ahead and make the biscuits. First, we're going to start with the Independence Day salad here. So I am filling up my pot with some cold water to get some eggs hard boiled. This recipe called for four hard boiled eggs. I did hard boil a couple extra, I mean, I was already doing it, so you might as well go ahead and toss a few extra in there for snacks later, right? So I set the eggs in cold water, put about an inch over the top of them, and then I went ahead and put it on high heat. I let it come to a boil and then I put a cover on top, took it off of the burner, and let it rest for 13 minutes. After the eggs had sat in the hot water for 13 minutes, I then had to take a slotted spoon and pull them out of their hot water and drop them immediately into nice cold icy water to stop the cooking so they didn't overcook. So that is what I'm doing here. I let them all soak for a little bit and then I was just kind of testing them to make sure that they were cold and cooled down so I was just kind of feeling them over and make sure there was none that was still warm or anything before I went ahead and shelled them. Next it was time to cut up all of my ingredients that I needed to get for the salad. So first up was the green pepper here, I'll kind of speed through how I cut it. I'm using one of my Pyrex anniversary knives that I picked up a couple years ago. This one's in a orange color but it's actually the gooseberry pattern on it. I really love these knives. I have two others. This is a tool I picked up off of Rachel Ray over a decade ago. I love this thing. I believe she calls it the scoopula. And as you can see, it works really nicely. You just scrape everything right into it. You can toss it right into the bowl. Very simple. You don't have to pick away at it with your hands and try to get it, you know, fight with it to get it in the bowl. So this recipe called for two cups of chopped celery. 
So I figured that would be about four celery stalks here. I went ahead and chopped off the celery stalk on top, the little leafy stuff. I don't discard it, however. I will go ahead and wash it off, and I'll throw it in a Ziploc bag and toss it in the freezer along with all my other kitchen scraps like onion peels and things like that because once I fill the bag up, I go ahead and toss it into a crock pot and I'll make a chicken stock or some kind of a soup stock with it. So, you know, you can always use these little things that you don't actually eat. You can always cut it off because there's lots of nutrients and flavor still left in them. And now they're asking for a fourth cup of pickles. I always put pickles in my potato salad anyway, so that wasn't a new ingredient for me. I just took two spears and chopped them up. I'm not one of those types of people that measures exactly unless it's for baking. <laughs> and so it looked good to me. So you can't have potato salad without the potatoes, right? So I took some main potatoes and I took about five of them. They're pretty large. They're asking for four cups of chopped potatoes, so I figured that would do the trick there. You just toss them in some water, bring it to a boil, you let it boil for about 20 to 25 minutes. I let mine go for 25 minutes because mine were a little bit larger, and then you drain them out and let them cool. I always test mine with a fork, I just kind of poke it in to make sure they're done and it goes through and comes back out very easily. So one thing this recipe called for that I would never had heard of putting in a potato salad before is ham. So I got this piece of already pre-cooked ham at the grocery store and I'm just trimming all the fat off of it right now. I didn't want to include that in there so this is a bone in ham so I had to cut the fat and the bone out of it and so that's what I'm doing here and I'm just cubing it up. They are asking for two cups cubed and so it's probably for about half of the ham steak, I would say. And now that the potatoes are cooled down, I'm going to cube them up into little bite sizes. My dog Yoda is behind me. He must have smelled the ham as I was chopping it up. <laughs> Since it is the Independence Day salad, I thought it'd be fitting to use the early American Pyrex that I have here. I'm just going to set the potatoes in there that I'm chopping up. This was produced from 1962 to 1971, and it was actually the first Pyrex piece to have 22 karat gold on it. So, so this recipe called for four hard-boiled eggs, but they only wanted you to chop up two of them to add into the salad itself, and then... The last two were just to use as garnish on top. So I ended up using a lot of Pyrex and Corel for my prep bowls. This is a recipe that you can definitely work your way at it throughout the day. You can start your eggs and potatoes early on in the morning and kind of chop everything up and then, you know, kind of throw it together. And potato salad actually is really good just to like make early on in the day anyway and put it in the fridge and it's really good cold. So it's definitely a nice make ahead recipe. So just to recap quickly the ingredients, you need four cups of cubed cooked potatoes, you need two cups of cooked ham, cubed, two cups of diced celery, a fourth cup of diced pickles, one cup of broken up lettuce, a fourth cup of minced green pepper, four hard-boiled eggs, two chopped up and two for garnish, one cup of mayo, one teaspoon of salt, a dash of pepper, one teaspoon of prepared mustard, and one fourth cup of sour cream. Now we're going to combine it all into my large stainless steel bowl. This is my favorite bowl. I use it all the time. It's just super large and it's easy to mix everything in without having to worry about things falling out of the side.
The best way to mix potato salad is always using your bare hands. It's just so much to grab and to try to really get coated well. Your hands are something that works really quickly and it's just a quick cleanup so it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Now it's time to serve it up so it looks pretty. We're going to serve this up in my 045 2.5 quart Pyrex butterfly gold casserole dish here. Butterfly gold was produced from 1972 to 1981 and of course we all know that Corel plates were compatible to them. So I thought it would look cute since I am going to serve it up on a Corel butterfly gold plate as well. Alright, so normally this day and age I would be happy and satisfied with just serving this up, but a vintage recipe, they love to add garnishes, so they suggested to do some more hard boiled eggs, some tomato slices, and then some olives. So we'll go ahead and try to make it look fancy, we'll see how it works. <laughs> so let's do a couple like right there. See, it was a little difficult because I don't know exactly how they wanted it. This was not a picture recipe book, so I'm just kind of winging it here. <laughs> Let's do that. They did suggest, you know, a couple extra eggs for garnish at the end. The tomatoes are extra. I don't know if this one's going to land right. You can get him to stay there. You stay there. <laughs> So I, I mean, I guess it does make it a little nicer when you're serving it up to do this, but it's not something I usually do in my everyday cooking. So that looks pretty good there. Maybe we'll put a few olives in the center here. Let's see. We'll do something like that. What do you think? That's pretty cute, right? <laughs> and so I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'm hungry. I'm ready to dig in. So this is my 1960s Independence Day salad, complete with the tacky garnishes that was oh so popular back then. Now we're moving on to the strawberry shortcake. This recipe is a little complicated because they have wrote it out a little weird. It has this recipe here where it's just talking about the double berry shortcake and then it says drop biscuit dough and you know, it doesn't give the recipe to the drop biscuit dough, so you have to go to another page for that. So we're going to go ahead and make that and get those in the oven here. And then it does say to have sweetened strawberries is what I'm using here. So it doesn't tell you how to sweeten the strawberries. I know they want it to be like kind of liquidy. So, I mean, I the vintage books, I wish they did describe things a little bit more, but I suppose people knew what they were doing back in the day. And it was just like a simple, you know, how to. So... I'm not sure, do they want me to just like sweet talk it here, you know, let's, let's see, let's see if it works. You are the reddest, most delicious strawberry I've ever seen. If you entered a contest, I'm sure you would win first prize. Is that how it's done? <laughs> now that our strawberries have been sweetened, we're going to go ahead and chop the rest of them up here and toss them into the bowl. And then I'm actually going to add some sugar into it. I think this is the way it's done. You let the sugar set into the strawberries and it will kind of release the juices. So hopefully that works. I did see another method where you would do, you know, kind of cook them on the stove and stuff like that briefly to get the juices draining out of it. So I'm really hoping this method works. If not, I'm okay with that because I'm ready to eat. <laughs> I'm ready to eat these delicious strawberries and it's not going to bother me that much. So I've gone ahead and cut the green tops off of them and I've rinsed them in my colander here. I'm just going to go ahead and slice them up a little bit smaller because some of them are quite large. So yeah, I'm just going to simply slice them and put them into my Pyrex bowl, of course. I'm still using the early American Pyrex bowl here, the Cinderella bowl. And yeah, so I'm just gonna do this and then I'm gonna add the sugar into it and see if it will release the juices.
All right, so I've gone ahead and added some sugar to the strawberries to release some of the juices to get a syrup forming. So it'll kind of drip down the biscuits and make them nice and yummy. It kind of acts as a little bit of moisture and frosting in a way. For our biscuits, we are going to need two cups of flour. Then we are going to need three teaspoons of baking powder. And then we are going to need one teaspoon of salt. And then we'll need a third cup of oil. I used olive oil, extra virgin. And then we also need two thirds cup of milk. Okay, so we are supposed to sift all of our dry ingredients. So we are going to add our flour here. Sifting was very common and important back in the day. So go ahead and sift this in. That's getting low, so let's go ahead and add in the salt. And we'll add in the baking powder. We'll sift that all in. I think it just helps break it down a little bit, makes it more, you know, a little bit airier and a little bit fluffier. You want to make sure the dry ingredients are mixed in good before you add the wet so you don't risk over mixing it and getting tough biscuits. Go ahead and add your oil and then put your milk in as well. You're going to want to gently mix it in with a fork. Again, it's very important to not over mix the dough to ensure you get the perfect textured biscuit. You just kind of want to fold it in a little bit until it's just combined. I like to give it one last little mix to make sure everything is blended in. Plus, playing with dough is just kind of therapeutic. Such a great texture to play with. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do some drop biscuits. They don't want the pan to be greased, so you can use either a muffin pan like I have here or just a flat cookie sheet. They will probably spread out a little bit nicely on a cookie sheet. These are going to be more muffin size. So we'll just break some off here and keep filling up the cups. All right, so you're going to want to put it in a preheated oven at 475 degrees and bake it for 10 to 12 minutes. So once I left the drop biscuit recipe, I went back over to the original double berry recipe and I noticed they had wanted us to add sugar to the biscuit dough. So I just went ahead and sprinkled some on the top and the next time I make it, I will go ahead and mix the sugar in. I just didn't know because I was over on a completely different page and it was just for the biscuit dough. So just keep that in mind. You can go ahead and add some sugar into the dough itself. My biscuits are all done cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out and slice them in half and then start serving up the strawberry shortcake. So while my strawberries are starting to release the liquid, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into a little bit of this potato salad and we'll give it a try. I'll just take just a little bit. <laughs> get a little tomato, get an egg, and go ahead and give this a little try. So while I'm waiting for my strawberries to release the juices, I'm gonna go ahead and try a little bit of this potato salad here. Get some ham, some of the egg, get a little green pepper, a little piece of this tomato here. Okay, I think we got everything covered. <laughs> I like it. The ham, the ham adds the salty flavor that you really want. It doesn't make it overly salty. And then the celery and the green pepper give it a nice crunch. So the texture is really nice to it. So yeah, I, I would make this again. I think it's a nice little twist on potato salad. Normally when I make potato salad, I will make it with just, you know, simple ingredients. I will do the pickles, 
I do the potatoes, the eggs, and you know, the mayo and mustard and salt and pepper basically. So I like the added ingredients. It gives it a nice little twist, extra protein, extra nutrition. So I'm a fan. So checking in with my strawberries and see if we got any juice coming out of them. Oh, you see that? Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. See that strawberry juice forming down there? It is definitely working. So I think it's about where I want it to be. So it's time to go ahead and assemble the biscuits. We'll plate it up and see how it is. So here's what my biscuit ended up looking like since I used the muffin pan. It did, you know, turn out a little bit smaller and shaped like a muffin. Had I done it on a flat sheet, it probably would have expanded a little bit, but you know, I think it's a good little size. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it in half. Check out my silverware. I have little roosters on them. It's not cute. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut it in half here. I could probably do two, really, just because they are so tiny. And yeah, they crumbled not too much, you know, pretty good for biscuits. They're nice and flaky and good. So we're gonna go ahead and I believe they want us to layer it. So we'll add a few strawberries here. Do it like that. We'll add a little bit of this cream. And then they want us to layer this again. Let's do, let's do another strawberry. Let's put one right there. We'll add this biscuit on top there. We'll add some of this yummy juice. Some more of that yummy strawberry juice. That's the good stuff. <laughs> That's looking good. And then we'll add a little bit more cream on top. That looks yummy. What do you guys think? Looks pretty good. I'm excited to try it. Let's see. Doesn't that look absolutely delicious? Let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's get some of this biscuit, some of the strawberry. That is delicious. You're definitely gonna wanna try this recipe. Strawberries are absolutely delicious. Everything is sweetened just perfectly. The biscuits gives it that nice, almost like a savory taste to it, so it's not overly sweet. But yeah, I really like this a lot. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the recipes and let me know down below if you guys are going to go ahead and give these a try. I thought they came out great. They are super delicious. I am a huge fan of strawberry shortcake, so it's a nice little spin on it for me. And the potato salad is a little different, you know, it's much different than the way I typically make it. So yeah, it was an interesting experience and I definitely enjoyed both recipes. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out the playlist down below of all of the other participants and I will catch you in the next video. Bye!